as I say, it's clear to me that the Greens platform is not extremist nor loopy, and that if examined with an open mind to policy rather than politics, and my book is all about policy, the platform would make sense to many Australians. It's also obvious to me that historic ALP values and the Greens platform are not very far apart, and I found it very interesting doing some research on Ben Chifley, and I came to the conclusion that there was just as much chance if he was alive today that he'd be a Greens member as he'd be an ALP member. I, I think the rise of the Greens also and the fracturing of the relationship is really an effective fourth split of the ALP. The ALP has had upheavals in 1916, 1931 and 1955 and some of you may remember or know that after 1955 split they were out of office at federal level for some 17 years. Um, that was especially damaging and by some of my research has shown that by the mid-1960s the ALP support base was narrow and especially limited in its appeal to younger voters, to women and to immigrants. Labor in the 60s was seen as the party of trade unions and the blue collar worker but out of touch with the changing society. I remember the excitement as a young 10, 11 year old when Whitlam was campaigning with the It's Time campaign. That was my first introduction to politics and as I say in the book, when I was that age I was learning guitar and my guitar teacher actually had to stop because he could have been um, called up to go to Vietnam. And I thought that was particularly unjust, and that introduced me to politics and, and started my interest. Um, I think the rise of the Greens is really a reversal of the broadening of the party that happened when Whitlam got into to the leadership position, and which was extended by Hawke. So I think the AOP had a pretty narrow base in the 60s. They broadened with Whitlam's leadership, and we're seeing the reversal of some of that with the Greens now having 9 to 14% of the vote, depending on on the year. And I think that's a pity.